Under New Management, our little Bible devotion, a little study to bring hope to the hopeless. Welcome to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. James is writing about trials. My question to you, are you going through a trial? Are you a Christian? Are you born again of the Holy Spirit? Well, he says it right there in, in the Bible, count it all joy. We can count all joy because we know why God allows trials to come into our lives. Number one, to test our faith. And number two, to produce patience within us. So while we're going through this trial, we're now we're in the midst of this trial that just came into our life. If it's a physical trial, financial trial, emotional, spiritual, whatever various trial came into our life, Verse 5 of chapter 1, James says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, okay, we're going through a trial. What do I do? Ah, who do I talk to? Where do I go? Well, James gives us the answer in verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God. Simple, with a comma. Ask God. Ask God for wisdom. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. Ask, and you shall receive. Knock, it will be open. Seek, and you will find, Jesus said. But you need to ask. Ask God, I need wisdom through this situation I'm going through at work, or with my family, or this financial decision I have to make. I just got diagnosed with a disease. Now, what do I do, Lord? What do I do? Help me. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So you have wisdom, but you have knowledge. Knowledge is that step-by-step process on how to put something together, fix something, or, you know, go to college, take accounting i took accounting and um had to learn the 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 balance sheet the income statements all that goodness i have the knowledge but now we have to ask god on how to apply the knowledge to our lives to this situation wisdom that's where wisdom comes in you may have knowledge but you also need that need that wisdom on how to Apply that knowledge for a great result. So if any, of you, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Period. I like that. So in a trial, in the midst of a trial, we're not alone. Jesus is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And because he's with us, he's in us, he lives in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can ask God. So when we ask God, he is listening to our request. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, prayed to his father. Early in the morning, he would have a relationship with his father, and he talked to him through prayer. You have access to the throne room. You're a Christian, you're Christ-like, you're a Christ follower, you're born again, you're a child of the living God. We have access to the Father through Jesus. So how do I ask God for wisdom? Lord, I know you're with me. I know you're listening to me. I'm going through this thing. I'm going through this trial. Help me in the name of Jesus. I pray. We always pray in the name of Jesus. The only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. He is the mediator, our mediator. When we pray, he hears our prayers. He's our high priest who's who's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. So let's get back to the word. If any of you lacks wisdom, do you ask God? That's your answer. Why? Because he gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith. Man, when trials come, we're so 
deep in our trial that our mind, our eyes, that's all we see is the trial, but we don't see God in the trial. Just like Jesus was walking on the water to the disciples and Peter said, whoa, I want to walk on water with you. Jesus said, come. So G and Peter took that first step off the boat and he started walking on water with Jesus. But then the trial came while, while Peter was on the water, walking on water. It wasn't a magic trick, no magic show. He was walking on water. A storm came and then Peter took his eyes off Jesus and placed it on the storm. And then Peter started sinking into the water. But guess who saved him? Jesus, help! Jesus reached down and pulled him out of the water. And that's what Jesus does. He's our Savior. He's our God. He loves us so much that when we're drowning in the midst of that trial... He will save us, but we need to ask him for wisdom. We ask God, who's God? Jesus. And we ask in faith with no doubting. Okay, no doubting. You ask in faith knowing that Jesus is walking with you in the midst of this trial. We know this. We know this as Christians, that he's with us and that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Did you know it's through the trials that God grows our faith? Did you know when we embrace the trial that the trial allows us to grow up and mature spiritually in Christ Jesus? So no doubting, no doubting Thomas's please. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Who? The doubter. So when we pray to Jesus, who is God, eternal God, we pray with expectancy, knowing, when I pray, I pray in confidence, knowing that Jesus is hearing my prayer. I don't have no doubt. I know he's hearing, but I know he's going to answer in his timing and according to his word or his will. For let not that man, that doubting Thomas, man, suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Wow. I'm going to read this to you. To ask God, but to, to, to ask God, but to ask him in a doubting way shows that we are double minded. Let me repeat that. To ask God, but to ask him in a doubting way means that we're double minded. If we had no faith, he would never ask at all. We would never ask. If he, we had no faith, we would never ask at all. If we had no unbelief, we would have no doubting. So to be in the middle ground between faith and unbelief is to be double-minded. Wow. The man who said to Jesus, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief was not double-minded. He wanted to believe, and he declared his belief. His faith was weak, but it wasn't tinged with a double-minded doubt. Wow. Double-mindedness. Double-mindedness. In our trials, we are to be focused on Christ, standing on the rock of Jesus, knowing that he is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. God bless you guys.